What's up y'all? Welcome back to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today we're going to take a look at five items. Three of these items are going to be upgrades of items that we use on a daily basis. One of these items is a gadget that I've never seen before. So we're going to check it out closely and see if it's something we can use in our shop. Lastly, we're going to roll out with something that should help us with our glue ups. So let's check these items out and see if they're going to work for us. So our first item today is something that I've relentlessly been pursuing since I got into woodworking, and that's the perfect corner clamp. I have a ton of these, anywhere from a band clamp to an actual L clamp. Let's take a look and see what I got, and then we'll see if this is any improvement. Dear Lord. So these are the corner clamps that I have right now. Let's take a closer look at them. So my corner clamp collection's getting a little out of control. I first started off with these band clamps, and you already know what I think about those. Then I moved on to the L clamps, and these are great. These are my go-to corner clamps. Next, I just purchased these wet hole corner clamps. And if you saw my previous video, these are great. However, they don't have a whole lot of clamping force. Let's take a look at what we just purchased. So I just explained how those wet hole clamps that I purchased earlier and featured in an earlier video don't give a whole lot of clamping pressure. But I thought I'd give wet holes a second chance. This is the 90 degree angle clamp from Wet Holes. Let's open this box and see if it has any more pressure than those other Wet Hole clamps. So inside the box comes two clamps, and these are made of metal, which is a big upgrade from the original Wet Hole clamp that was made of plastic. Now this Wet Hole clamp I think is made for setup, and this is actually made for some clamping pressure. So let's take a look and see if this provides the pressure that we need, and most importantly, is it gonna keep our angles at 90 degrees? So for this example, I'm gonna clamp up two pieces of scrap wood that have different thicknesses. Now one thing I noticed right off the bat with this clamp is it does have a very ergonomic handle and it's got a nice rubber grip on it that's very easy to grab. Wow, 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 is it very nice? One of the reasons I'm using two different thicknesses of wood is because this clamp allows you to do so. Because this clamp has a swivel arm on it, it maintains that 90 degree angle no matter how thick the wood is. Now, if I did have to register a complaint about this clamp, it's that there's no quick release. Therefore, in order to get the clamp fully open, you have to unscrew it all the way. We are screwed. Once unscrewed, however, this clamp is able to handle wood up to two and a half inches thick. So hopefully you can see it in the shot, but there's a little bit of gangster lean in the clamp. And that's because this piece of wood is a little bit thinner than this piece of wood. And that's the great thing about this clamp. It allows you to easily clamp up two pieces of wood with different thicknesses and still maintain that 90 degree angle. If I put my square in here, you can see it's perfectly perpendicular. There's also no worry about the clamping pressure here. Here I have it upside down, I'll shake it, and those pieces of wood aren't going anywhere. You just shake it back and forth. There's no motor, no batteries, and you get the results you want. So I think my quest might be over. I can honestly say this is the best corner clamp I have ever used. It's very secure, it's very stable, and it keeps that 90 degree angle, which is exactly what I want in a corner clamp. I'm gonna be purchasing a lot more of these, so I'm super pleased with my original purchase of two. Well, so far we're batting 100% on our tools so far, but we've only looked at one item. Let's take a look at our second item and see if it does just as well. So let's talk push blocks for a moment. Jack talk tie very well. Now you know that I have two different push blocks that I really love. I have the gripper, which is my second favorite push block. I also have the grip block, which is amazing. Let me show you why I love this grip block so much. Now I know I got a lot of comments on a previous video I did about why I didn't like the gripper. And that's just not the case. It's not that I don't like the gripper, it's just that I like the grip block that much better. And that's for one reason and one reason only. It's because of these two extension wings on the back of the grip block. Now, as you can see from this close up, you can see how those two little wings really cradle your workpiece and give you support as you push it through your table saw. Now, these two little wings can also be retracted. Simply by placing it on top of your workpiece, they simply retract into the body of the grip block. Now, there's one design feature that I don't like about the grip block, and that's that these tabs can sometimes be very difficult to push down. A lot of times, you only have one hand to push this down when you're working on your workpieces. And right here, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that tab to get that foot to come down. Now there's an easy solution for this, and that's to keep both of these feet down at all times. And that's typically what I do. So even though there's a solution for this little hiccup, I still decided to make an upgrade. And that's why I decided to purchase this Grabber Plus from Milescraft. 
So let's take a closer look at some of the design differences between these two push blocks. If we look at the Grabber Plus, you can see that it has an angled handle. If we look at the Grip Block, it also has an angled handle, but it also has a handle that goes diagonal. If we look at the length of the two push blocks, you can see that the Grabber Plus is just a little bit longer than the Grip Block. If we look at the underside of these two push blocks, you can see that they both have a very nice non-stick material that should give us a lot of support as we're pushing our workpiece through our table saw or a router. If we take one last look at the handles, you can see that the Grabber Plus has a much more ergonomic handle than the Grip Block. It's got these nice finger holes that give you a very secure feel as you push your workpiece through your router table, your table saw, or your jointer. So even though the Grabber Plus has a much more comfortable feel, the real reason I purchased it is because of these extension wings. Now these are spring loaded. Not only are they spring loaded, but you can also lock them up by twisting this knob and locking them into place. For me, these spring-loaded support wings are a much better design than having to fiddle with locking these little wings back and forth into place. In fact, I can't even push that down right now. There it goes. And after using the grip block for so long and being such a big fan of it, I can already tell that this is just a much more comfortable tool and it feels much more secure than the grip block. So I'm super stoked. We've gone through two items so far and I think we've hit home runs with both of them. Before we get to our third item, I ask you to do me a favor and hit that subscribe button as it really does help out this small channel and leave a like. Also, I love reading your comments, so leave a comment if you get a chance. Now let's move on to our third item. So you probably already know, but I love gadgets. I love getting on Amazon.com and searching out all the new tools. I always like to see something that I've never seen before, and that's exactly what this next tool is. As a reminder, I'm going to be leaving links to all the tools that we talk about in this video in the description below. So go check them out if any of these interest you. So this next tool is something that is not only useful in your shop, but it's also useful in your home. And that is the Laser Level Pro. Let's take a look at this and see all the functions of this multi-use tool. So let's take a closer look and see what comes inside this box. The tool, along with some extra batteries, a little metal ruler, and a screwdriver so that you can replace those batteries. So one of the main reasons why I got this tool was because of the laser. Now this laser goes both horizontally and vertically, and this is great. It allows you some easy setup when hanging picture frames or even setting up screw holes on your work pieces. So hopefully you can see that laser line on the bottom of my assembly table, but this is a really powerful laser. I turned all the lights off in my barn and it was able to go 50 feet across my barn and strike a perfect horizontal line. Some of the other features of this tool that I don't think will get as much use is it does have an imperial and metric ruler on either side. It goes from six inches on this side to 15 centimeters on this side. It also has levels for horizontal, vertical, as well as 45 degrees. The last kind of cool feature of this tool is it does have an eight foot tape measure on the end. Now this tape measure functions a little bit different than some of the other tape measures I have as it stays locked in place as you pull it out. And then to pull it in, you simply push this tab. So I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty cool little gadget, especially for the price. Is this something I'm gonna be using every day? No, 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 mm -mm. Absolutely not. However, it's something that's nice to have around your workshop or in your house. For me, I'm gonna keep this up at my house and then whenever I need to do something like level out some picture frames or even do some leveling on some furniture, I've got this tool in the junk drawer and I know exactly where it's at. All right, so we've taken a look at two home run upgrades as well as a cool little gadget. This next item is something that I'm sure you're gonna be glad you stuck around for. Now the next thing on our list is something that's not super sexy or super exciting. It's double-sided tape. Now there's something just a little bit different about this tape though. This is woodworkers double-sided tape. And this is just a little bit thinner and maybe not as strong as the normal double-sided tape that you may be used to using. So one of the main reasons that I use double-sided tape is to hold things down to a surface as I'm making things like templates. Now for the Shaper workstation, I always secure my items down to the tabletop here with some double-sided tape. Now normally I would use something like carpet tape and this seems to be really strong. The only problem is it creates a little bit of thickness with the tape. It's also so strong that a lot of times I have hard times getting out intricate work from my Shaper workstation. This becomes incredibly important when you're cutting through thin material. Last year I was creating some Christmas decorations with some quarter inch stock. When I secured this to my tabletop with some carpet tape, the carpet tape was so strong that it actually broke my project. 
So for demonstration purposes here, I put an equal amount of tape on these two pieces of scrap. I have carpet tape here in white, and then the woodworker's tape here in yellow. I'm gonna remove the backing and stick it to the surface. So here I've got my two pieces of scrap firmly attached to the tabletop. At the top, I've got my carpet tape, and at the bottom, I've got my woodworker's tape. Now I've applied even pressure to both pieces, so they should be equally attached. Now if we look at the woodworker's tape, you can see that it's very secure, and that's not going anywhere. However, I can easily get this off with just a little bit of pressure. The carpet tape, however, I'm gonna to need a screwdriver to get that off, as there's no way I can get this off without a lot of force. Now there are a few situations where I need that kind of bond between my workpiece and the tabletop. However, more often than not, I just need my workpiece secured. And I also don't wanna damage my workpiece when trying to release that bond. Bond. James Bond. And that's why I'm excited to have this tape in my workshop. It gives the perfect bond for securing my workpiece without causing any damage when trying to release that bond. So that's four items so far today, folks. Let's take a look at our fifth item and see if we can knock out one more home run. So I guess I told a fib. In my fourth episode of the 12 Days of Christmas, I told you that I had all the glue applicators that I needed, but that just wasn't true. I purchased one more item, so let's take a look at it. So in my previous video, I told you that my silly glue kit would be my final purchase for glue application. And that's just not true. Along with my tight bond brushes and my Rockler glue glide, I've got one more thing that I think is gonna make a difference in my glue ups. And that one thing is made by the same company that makes the Silly Glue Kit. And this is the Silly Glue Roller and Tray. Let's open this up and see what's inside. So this is the Silly Glue Roller, and it's very similar to a paint roller. It has a rolling action just like a paint roller, and it's got a rib tray that allows you to roll off any excess glue. It's also got a little notch on the very end that allows you to rest your glue roller right into the spot. The nice thing about this glue roller and this glue tray is they're entirely made of silicone. That means that once your glue dries, none of that glue is going to stick either to the tray or the glue roller. The handle of the roller is made of a nice abrasive aluminum. That way you have a firm grip on your roller as you're gliding it across your workpiece. The roller actually can rotate 360 degrees or be screwed down and locked into one place. So you may be asking, why did you get this glue roller when you already have the Rockler glue glide? And that's simply because this Rockler glue glide only allows you to have one glue in there at all times. Right now I have a Tight Bond 3 in there and there's a very little chance that I'm actually gonna replace that glue with any other type. The Silly Tray allows you to use the glue you're using on your project and once it's dry, clean it out and use another glue on your next project. Well, I think I'm finally done buying glue application devices. Maybe. However, we are done with this video. If you get a chance, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like, as it really does help out this small channel. Thanks for sticking around with me today, and we'll see you next time.